Inside the compact cabin of the lunar module, surrounded by toggle switches, black anodized panels, circuit breakers, and marrow windows, sat a device that ultimately determined whether two astronauts would survive the descent to the moon. It weighed just 70 pounds. It ran at about 2 megahertz. It held only a few thousand words of writable memory and held just 2,048 words of erasable memory. Yet this machine flew the lunar module through the most delicate and unforgiving powered landing ever attempted. This was the Apollo Guidance Computer, the AGC, the digital system that transformed raw inertial data into engine commands and thruster pulses that kept the lunar module upright on its way to the lunar surface. This is not the story of programming anecdotes or famous alarms. This is the engineering story. How this small computer was designed. How it processed acceleration and attitude data. How it shaped thrust commands. And how it held the lunar module stable at less than 100 feet above the moon. Before the first hardware prototypes existed, MIT's Instrumentation Laboratory confronted a problem no computer had ever solved. The lunar module was not a conventional vehicle. It had no aerodynamic surfaces, no passive stability, and no external reference except stars and a fragile inertial platform. To land safely, the computer needed to process rotation rates from the gyros, velocity changes from the accelerometers, and trajectory predictions stored in memory, all while controlling a throttleable descent engine and dozens of reaction thruster pulses every second. In the early 1960s, computers lived in climate-controlled rooms and weighed hundreds of pounds. They were slow, fragile, and unsuitable for flight. MIT engineers realized that nothing in existence could meet the lunar module's requirements, so they had to invent a new kind of computer. Compact, deterministic, vibration-resistant, radiation-tolerant, and absolutely predictable in timing. The Apollo Guidance computer emerged from that need. Its design became a turning point not only for spaceflight, but for digital electronics themselves. The Apollo Guidance Computer was one of the very first computers ever built using integrated circuits. At the time, these chips contained only a few transistors, forming a pair of simple NOR gates. MIT selected this approach because the lunar module required a computer that was small, power efficient, and able to survive mechanical stress. Using identical NOR gate ICs gave the AGC a degree of uniformity that made manufacturing and testing far more reliable. Each chip underwent aggressive screening. Many early devices failed NASA qualification, driving manufacturers to improve their processes. In an indirect way, the Lunar Module Guidance System pushed the semiconductor industry several years ahead of where it would have been. By the time the Block II computer flew, over 2,000 integrated circuits were arranged in logic modules positioned around the central memory assembly, forming a clean and serviceable architecture. Within the AGC, nearly all logic was implemented using only NOR gates. It was a triumph of engineering minimalism. From that minimalism came extraordinary reliability. To store the flight software for the lunar module, engineers could not rely on conventional semiconductor memory. They turned instead to core rope memory, a read-only technology that wove program bits into arrays of magnetic cores. 
If a wire passed through a core, it represented a digital one. If it bypassed the core, it represented a zero. This physical weaving encoded the fixed memory. The weaving process demanded remarkable precision and was performed by skilled workers at Raytheon. Each wire path became a literal embodiment of software logic. This memory was immune to radiation and power cycles, making it ideal for spaceflight. The Lunar Module's descent programs, P-63 for braking, P-64 for approach, and P-66 for final landing, were all stored in these woven modules. Alongside fixed memory, the AGC had slightly over 2,000 words of erasable magnetic core memory. These ferrite cores flipped magnetic polarity to store bits, and each read operation destroyed the stored value, requiring an immediate rewrite. All real-time navigation variables, IMU calibration constants, radar measurements, temporary buffers and dynamic state vectors had to fit within this tiny memory space. This constraint enforced an engineering discipline unlike anything in modern computing. The AGC's central timing signal originated from a master crystal oscillator at 2.048 MHz. Divider stages derived the CPU timing pulses, the executive cycle timing, and the display refresh rates for the diski. The instruction set consisted of just a few operations, yet from these simple pieces came sophisticated routines for navigation, attitude control, and descent guidance. Each instruction required multiple timing states, so the effective execution rate was far slower than the crystal frequency. Even so, the machine operated with relentless determinism. Every 20 milliseconds, the computer entered its major cycle, executing guidance updates, sensor sampling, disky scanning, thrust computation, and IMU interface tasks in fixed time windows. During lunar landing, this deterministic timing ensured that no matter what else happened, the descent control loop would always run precisely when needed. This discipline saved Apollo 11 when the computer experienced executive overload moments before landing. Rather than crash, the AGC shed non-essential tasks to maintain guidance computations. It did exactly what it was engineered to do. The Lunar Module's Inertial Measurement Unit housed three gimbal-mounted integrating gyros and three pulse-integrating accelerometers. The gyros measured angular rates. Their outputs were digitized as torquer pulse counts delivered directly into the AGC's dedicated input registers. The accelerometers measured acceleration by allowing an internal mass to shift under acceleration and generate discrete pulses proportional to velocity change. These pulses accumulated into the velocity registers, which the AGC integrated to maintain an evolving state vector. The state vector represented the lunar module's position, velocity, and orientation relative to the moon. It was the central mathematical representation the computer relied on for descent guidance. Every correction, every thrust adjustment, and every attitude change originated from comparisons between this internally predicted trajectory and real-time sensor data. As the lunar module approached the moon, 
the AGC took raw acceleration pulses, integrated them into the state vector, compared the actual trajectory to the predicted descent path, and generated thrust commands based on the resulting error. The descent engine was throttleable from roughly 1,000 to 10,000 pounds of thrust. This engine did not respond instantly to commands, so the AGC applied a dynamic shaping law to smooth throttle changes, compensate for pressure variations, and ensure stable vehicle control. The AGC issued the throttle signal as an analog value generated by a digital-to-analog converter, which fed the descent engine control assembly. Meanwhile, the computer used the reaction control thrusters to maintain attitude. These thrusters fired in extremely short pulses, often lasting only a few milliseconds. The AGC calculated the required pulse width and pulse count based on attitude errors derived from gyroscope inputs. During P64, as the lunar module transitioned from braking to approach, the AGC pitched the vehicle forward so that the landing radar could acquire the surface. The landing radar supplied slant range, slant range rate, and altitude rate. These measurements replaced predicted values in the state vector, correcting any drift accumulated during powered descent. During P66, the final landing program, the astronaut controlled horizontal motion using the rotational hand controller. The AGC translated these inputs into adjustments to the required attitude, but it continued to maintain stability, vertical descent, and throttle control. Even during the famous Apollo 11 manual landing, the computer was flying the spacecraft. Neil Armstrong selected the landing point, but the AGC kept the lunar module upright and controlled. The display in keyboard unit, the Disky, served as the interface between the astronaut and the Apollo guidance computer. It displayed register values using electroluminescent segments and accepted commands through a keypad. Every key press triggered an interrupt that informed the AGC of new input. The Disky was not a modern user interface. It was a direct viewport into internal registers and operating modes. Astronauts used two-digit verbs and two-digit nouns to request data or issue commands. During landing, the Disky displayed descent rate, horizontal velocity, altitude, and other critical parameters drawn directly from the guidance equations. The connection between astronaut and machine was intimate and immediate. The Disky allowed the crew to see exactly what the AGC was thinking and allowed them to override or adjust guidance modes when needed. The lunar module carried the Apollo guidance computer as its primary navigation and control system, but it also carried a completely independent backup known as the abort guidance system. Built by TRW, the abort guidance system had its own sensors, its own computer, and its own display. In a catastrophic failure of the primary system, the abort guidance system could perform a lunar ascent, stabilize the spacecraft, and navigate a rendezvous with the command module. The abort guidance system was never required for its ultimate purpose during flight, but its presence reflects the extraordinary level of redundancy built into the lunar module. Human lives depended on systems that could not fail, so engineers created layered backups for every critical function. During every lunar landing, the Apollo guidance computer integrated accelerometer data, compensated for gravity anomalies, controlled the descent engine, stabilized the vehicle with thruster pulses, 
processed landing radar inputs, updated the state vector, and ensured that the lunar module followed the most efficient descent trajectory possible. In the final seconds before touchdown, the AGC maintained a slight forward pitch to prevent dust from obscuring the astronaut's view. It dampened attitude oscillations caused by plume impingement on the lunar surface. It reduced vertical velocity to a few feet per second, and it continued to operate flawlessly as the lunar module settled onto its landing pads. Across all missions, the Apollo guidance computer never failed in flight. Every memory module held its data, every integrated circuit survived radiation and vibration, every timing cycle executed in its allotted window. It was one of the most reliable pieces of hardware in the entire Apollo program. The Apollo guidance computer was not just an early computer. It was the first true digital autopilot to handle every phase of a human landing on another world. Its influence can be seen in modern spacecraft, in fly-by-wire aircraft, in automotive control units, and in every embedded system that performs real-time deterministic control. From its Norgate logic to its hand-woven memory, from its carefully budgeted core to its 20 millisecond major cycle, the AGC defined the principles of reliable, real-time computing. It did not simply guide the lunar module. It proved that digital systems could be trusted with human lives in the most unforgiving environment imaginable. And in doing so, it helped humanity leave Earth and return safely.